and we stopped here in our last class. So let's start from this slide. The lifespan of the red blood cell. We are talking about the red blood cells. So the lifespan of a red blood cell is 90 to 120 days. That means 3 to 4 months only. Why is that? Because you know that mature red blood cells don't have nucleus, right? Nucleus is called the control center. So there is no control center in the red blood cell. Also, lack of mitochondria and absence of some important organelles make these cells, red blood cells, weak. The cell membranes get fragile and very weak and will be destroyed easily. Most of the red blood cells are destroyed in the liver and in the spleen. So spleen and liver are the sites where most of the red blood cells are destroyed. That's why these two organs are called the grave yards for the red blood cells. Now, after the destruction of the red blood cells, hemoglobin comes out, right? When the cell membrane is destroyed, hemoglobin comes out. And hemoglobin consists of two components. Hemoglobin consists of heme and globin. Right? That's why it is called hemoglobin. The heme part consists of that iron which is in ferrous form. Remember, plus plus, two plus form in hemoglobin. If it is in ferric form, F E, this is another form of iron, uh, but if it is in this form, this iron is not good to transport oxygen. So, in your hemoglobin, the iron should be in ferrous form. And other chemicals, you have iron and other chemicals in the heme and globin is protein so it is formed by amino acids you know proteins are formed by amino acids now when the red blood cell is destroyed hemoglobin comes out and heme and globin these two parts get what separated Okay. And he has iron and other chemicals. What happens? The iron goes back to the bone marrow. To produce new hemoglobin. So it will be reused, recycled. Also, the amino acids, that means the globin part will go back to the bone marrow. So these two important chemicals, iron and amino acids, will go back to the bone marrow to produce or synthesis new hemoglobin. Make sense? <clears throat> okay. To produce new red blood cells. Other chemicals of heat will be converted to bilivardi. Will be converted to bilivardi, and the bilivardi will be converted to bilirubin. Okay. So, other chemicals will be first converted to bilivardi, and then bilivardi 
will be converted to the yellow pigment that is called the bilirubin. Probably some of you have heard bilirubin, right? If the bilirubin concentration increases in your body, that condition is called what? Jaundice. Jaundice, yellow coloration of the skin and mucous membrane. So, bilirubin is a yellow pigment. Then, the bilirubin gets out from the body with urine and feces. That's why the urine is slightly yellowish color. You know that, right? Because of the presence of bilirubin. Also, feces is yellow color because of the presence of bilirubin. So, the bilirubin gets out from the body through the feces and urine. Make sense? Now, uh, that's what happened after the destruction of the red blood cells. Okay. <coughs> Is it clear? Okay. Hemoglobin is a red pigment that gives the color of the blood uh, of the blood. You know that blood is red because of hemoglobin. The normal concentration of hemoglobin in an adult male is 14 to 18 gram per deciliter of blood. One deciliter means 100 milliliter. One tenth of a liter. That means 100 milliliter. Okay. You have 14 to 18 gram in adult male. In adult female, you have less amount of hemoglobin, which is 12 to 16 gram per deciliter or 100 milliliter of blood. Why less? Very simple. You know that the red blood cell count is higher in male, right? Adult male than female. We have talked about that because of testosterone uh, and more muscles in the body. Metabolism is more. So, red blood cell count is higher in uh, male than the female. So, if the red blood cell count is high, hemoglobin amount will be higher because hemoglobin is located inside the red blood cell. This is the structure of a hemoglobin. You see that him and globin. Each hemoglobin molecule has four heme. How many? Four. You see those round structures? Those are heme and one globin. Each globin has four chains. So, the globin has four chains. 2 alpha and 2 beta chains. So, each globin has 4 chains alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. Now, if you see the heme, as I have already shown here, you see heme has an iron atom in the center and other chemicals around. You see the right side picture, that is the chemical structure of an, a heme. You see in the center, iron Fe plus plus, uh, 2 plus and around the iron you have other chemicals. And I have already mentioned that iron will go back to the bone marrow, right? But other chemicals will be converted to bilirubin and then to bilirubin. Is it clear? Okay. Here, this is a nice uh, chart picture that is showing uh, what happens uh, to the red blood cell. After 90 to 120 days, the red blood cells are destroyed. The macrophages 
located in the liver or spleen or other organs will engulf the red blood cells, old red blood cells and the cell membrane will be destroyed and two components of hemoglobin if you see here red blood cell this is macrophage uh, so after the destruction of cell membrane the heme and globin which is amino acids will get separated and heme has iron and other chemicals iron we see here fe2 will go back to the bone marrow and amino acids will go back to the bone marrow, right? And will be reused to produce new hemoglobin for new red blood cells. Now, the rest part of him will be converted to bilirubin and then bilirubin, that yellow pigment. And bilirubin will be secreted by the liver. If the red blood cell destruction occurs in the liver, the bilirubin is there. If the red blood cell destruction occurs in spleen or other areas, then bilirubin will go to the liver. Anyway, so finally, the liver will secrete the bilirubin where? Into the bile duct. You see from the liver, bilirubin will go to the bile duct. The bile duct will take the bilirubin to the intestine. Okay, so most of the bilirubin will go to the intestine through the bile duct. Duct is a tube going from the liver to the intestine. Make sense? And will get mixed with the food stuff and will get out from the body as feces. Small amount of bilirubin you see here will go to the kidneys by the blood. Will go to the kidneys and will, will be excreted with the urine. That's why the color of the urine is yellow. So that's the fate of the red blood cells. Hemoglobin urea and hematuria are two uh, conditions. When we examine the urine, if you find hemoglobin breakdown products in the urine, that condition is called hemoglobinuria. Urea indicates urine. as That means hemoglobin breakdown products or hemoglobin products are present in the urine. That's why it is called hemoglobinuria. Now, hematuria is the condition when whole red blood cell, not hemoglobin, the intact red blood cells are found in the urine. If you take a drop of urine and put on the slide and see under the microscope, you will be able to see what whole intact red blood cells. So that condition is called hematuria. Now, uh, hematuria uh, could be um, an indicator of serious condition because you know that kidney filters the blood, right? Removes the metabolic waste. But if that filter gets bad, then red blood cells will get out. Normally, red blood cells should not get out, right? But if the filter gets bad, then many red blood cells can get out through the filter, to the kidney. And that is not a good sign. So, we will now move to the part 2. So, we uh, have talked about the red blood cells, clinical conditions like anemia, right, polycythemia, those are related to the red blood cells. We have also talked about the production and the stages of maturation, changes during maturation of the red blood cells. We have seen 
the destruction of the red blood cells, right? Uh, what happens after the red blood cells are destroyed? We have talked about the structure of hemoglobin, right? And um, a couple of clinical conditions. Now we'll go to the next part. Still downloading, so let's wait. Can't do anything. Okay. So, now first we'll talk about uh, the erythrocyte disorders. Okay, so we uh, will talk about the clinical conditions related to the red blood cells. One very commonly heard clinical condition is called anemia. Probably all of you have heard anemia. We will talk about that. Then we will talk about the white blood cells. Five different types of white blood cells are present in the blood. We will see what are those different types of white blood cells, how they look like. We will also talk about the properties of the white blood cells. Then we will talk about thrombocytes. Thrombocytes are platelets. Another name of platelet is thrombocyte. Then we will talk about the blood clot or coagulation. How coagulation or blood clot formation occurs. Then we will talk about blood types or blood groups. First, anemia. Anemia is a clinical condition in which blood has abnormally low oxygen carrying capacity. Now, which type of cells carry oxygen? Which blood cells carry oxygen? Red blood cells carry oxygen, right? So, if in your blood, the count of red blood cell is low, then oxygen carrying capacity will be low. Make sense? Now you tell me which component of red blood cell carries oxygen? Inside the red blood cell, what do you have? Hemoglobin, right? That carries oxygen. So, if the amount of hemoglobin goes down, then oxygen carrying capacity will be low. Make sense? Because hemoglobin carries oxygen. So, either decreased number of red blood cell or decreased amount of hemoglobin can cause anemia. So, anemia can occur due to decreased number of red blood cells as well as decreased amount of hemoglobin. Now, uh, the signs of hemoglobin, <coughs> extreme tiredness, fatigue, because if your blood cannot carry enough oxygen, your tissue, your muscles will not get enough oxygen, make sense? And you will easily get tired. Paleness, you know that hemoglobin gives the red coloration of the skin. If hemoglobin is lacking, then the skin color and mucous membrane will be pale. Shortness of breath because of lack of oxygen in uh, the body, the, uh, the person will be hungry for air, will have shortness of breath and chills. So those are uh, the signs or symptoms of anemia. Now, uh, anemia could occur uh, in different ways. One is insufficient erythrocytes that I have already mentioned, right? Lack of red blood cells. Now, how in our blood the number of red blood cell can decrease 
different ways. One is called hemorrhagic anemia. What is that? Hemorrhage is bleeding, right? So, if blood loss, we lose blood from the body, then the red blood cell count will go down. Very simple, right? If you lose blood from the body, then hemoglobin and red blood cell count will be less. Now, hemorrhage or bleeding could occur or blood loss could occur in two ways. One is called acute loss, another is called chronic loss. Which one is fast and sudden? Acute. Chronic is slow, long, right? So, acute loss of blood, example, accident, right, can uh, cause sudden loss of blood from your body. Another is major surgeries, big surgeries, uh, can, uh, you can lose a lot of blood from the body. So, those are the examples of acute loss of blood. Now, chronic loss. Can you give me an example of chronic loss? Slowly, small amount, but for long time. If you get an ulcer in your stomach, ulcer from the ulcer, blood bleeding, blood can leak out slowly, right? So um, that is one example. Another is. Do you know in your intestines uh, you can get warm? Mm -hmm. All different types of warm, right? Mm -hmm. Tape warm, hook warm, <laughs> there are many different types of warm. Uh, they love to stay in the intestine and they love to suck the blood slowly but for a long time, right? Uh, so you lose blood slowly for a long time, chronic loss of blood that can cause anemia. Hemolytic anemia, hemolytic, lysis means breakdown. So, excessive breakdown of red blood cells. If the red blood cells are destroyed prematurely uh, or excessive destruction occurs, that will decrease the number of red blood cells. Another is aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia occurs due to destruction or depression of the bone marrow, bone marrow depression. You know that bone marrow is the primary site of blood cell production. You know that, right? So, if the bone marrow is depressed or destroyed, then it will not be able to produce enough red blood cells. Make sense? Now, how bone marrow destruction or depression can occur? Many ways, but uh, most common causes, one is excessive radiation. If someone gets too much radiation, that can depress the bone marrow or destroy. Another is drugs, some medicines can depress the bone marrow, particularly penicillin, antibiotic, high dose. Okay. So those are the three ways your red blood cell count can go down. Make sense? Okay. Another is low hemoglobin content anemia. What is that? In this case, you see this is normal person's blood. For example, there's this many red blood cells and this is anemia. So, if we know that this is anemic, this is normal because this person has 
normal number of red blood cells this person has less or reduced number of red blood cells right that is the condition we have just talked about decreased number so definitely this is anemia now another thing can happen see this person has this two both have same number of red blood cells right but inside the red blood cells you see if this is normal person he has normal amount of hemoglobin normal amount of hemoglobin but this person has same number of red blood cells but the amount of hemoglobin is less so which is anemic this one right amount of hemoglobin is less but the count of red blood cell is normal so that is low hemoglobin content anemia how that can happen one is due to iron deficiency okay you know that the main component of heme is iron right fe plus plus so if your body doesn't have doesn't get enough iron the hemoglobin synthesis will not occur another condition is called pernicious anemia in which lack of vitamin b12 decreases the synthesis of hemoglobin because vitamin b12 is needed during the synthesis of hemoglobin so if someone has lack of vitamin b12 the synthesis will be less so that is called pernicious anemia now another type of anemia abnormal hemoglobin content anemia now you see this person has also a lot of hemoglobin but the quality of hemoglobin is not good the amount is normal for example but the quality is not good so these hemoglobin are useless their quality is not good okay so abnormal that not normal so this is also anemia these hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen so two common types of abnormal hemoglobin content anemia one is called thalassemia thalassemia is the condition where the hemoglobin has faulty globin chain the globin part of hemoglobin has abnormal chain you remember 2 alpha 2 beta chain right so those chains are abnormal so the hemoglobin is not good to transport oxygen another abnormal hemoglobin content anemia is called sickle cell anemia have you heard the word sickle what is that kind of carb knife right uh, people uh, farmers used to use that before uh, you know to cut the crop so uh, sickle cell anemia in which the hemoglobin shape changes and becomes pointed both ends get pointed and sharp and the hemoglobin turns to hard hemoglobin not soft it turns to hard like crystal and the ends get pointed so that hemoglobin is not good and that changes the shape of the cell like a sickle and these cells are uh useless they cannot transport oxygen now uh, you see this occurs why the shape of the hemoglobin changes and why the hemoglobin turns hard in this condition just because of one spot change in one spot 
the amino acid chain. This is the amino acid chain in normal hemoglobin. Uh, you see these are the amino acids, valine, histidine, leucine, threonine. So in this third place, the glutamate is enhanced by valine. If that happens only in one spot, then the shape of the hemoglobin changes. So it is a genetical disorder, genetic disorder, okay? And uh, African black people suffer more uh, from sickle cell anemia. This is a dangerous clinical condition. Uh, usually patients die. Another clinical condition related to the erythrocytes is called polycythemia. In this case, what happens? The red blood cell count increases abnormally high. So, if you have abnormally high number of red blood cells, that condition is called polycythemia. So, it is kind of opposite of anemia, right? Polycythemia could be two different types. One is called polycythemia vera and another is called the secondary polycythemia. Polycythemia vera is a clinical condition that happens due to tumor or cancer in the bone marrow. So when tumor or cancer uh, uh, occurs in the bone marrow, bone marrow will produce more red blood cells. Abnormal multiplication, right? Rapid abnormal multiplication of cells will occur. So in the circulation in your blood, you will have very high number of red blood cells. That is a clinical condition called polycythemia vera. Secondary polycythemia is not a clinical condition. That is that is a normal response of your body. For example, if you go on the top of the mountain, the red blood cell count will go up because hypoxia will occur, right? That will, because of lack of oxygen, red blood cell count will go up. That's not a clinical condition. That will happen to healthy person, right? To everybody. That will happen to everybody. So, that is the response, normal response of your body. When you will come back to sea level, then it will again go away. So this is called secondary polycythemia, also called physiological polycythemia. Make sense, right? Physiology is normal function, response of the body. So secondary is also called physiological polycythemia. So those are two types of polycythemia. Now, Another way you can create polycythemia that is called doping. Uh, athletes sometimes they do that, uh, take their blood out and just before and preserve it somewhere and before the performance or event they inject the blood into their body. So they are injecting red blood cells into their body, right? So the number of red blood cell will go up and it will stay like that for a while. So they, their performance will better, be better because red blood cells will carry more oxygen. Make sense? So their oxygen carrying capacity will go up for a while. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Good for them. <laughs> they can perform better. Uh, but this is not allowed. Okay. So that is blood doping. Okay, now we will talk about the white blood cells, WBC. <clears throat> white blood cells, the count of white blood cell is 4 to 11,000. So 4,000 to 11,000 per microliter. Of blood. Okay. So that's the count. 
and you have seen the count of red blood cell is what? Million, right? 4 to 6 million. So, many hundred times more. So, uh, that's the normal count of white blood cells in the blood. That makes up less than 1% of total blood volume. Properties of white blood cells. Remember, these properties are functional properties, not anatomical properties. So, white blood cells show the following functional properties. Margination, diapedesis, amoeboid motion, positive chemotaxis and phagocytosis. So, those are the properties of white blood cells. If I ask you in the test that uh, what are the properties, right, five important properties of white blood cells. Uh, uh, don't write white blood cell has a cell membrane, has a nucleus. Mm -hmm. I see sometimes students do that. I am not going to give you any point for that. All cells have cell membrane, right? So these are the properties of white blood cells. Now, uh, this is the blood vessel, for example, a vein. And outside of the vein, here, you got infection. So, you have microorganisms, bacteria or virus here. So, this is the site of inflammation or site of in infection. Okay site of infection or inflammation. You have microorganisms here. When the blood will pass through the nearby blood vessel, the white blood cells can detect that something is wrong here and they will do what? Instead of passing through the blood vessel, they will get attached to the wall of the blood vessel. They will line up, get attached and line up on the wall of the blood vessel. And that process is called margination. And then next is what? You know that in the wall of vein and capillaries you have small holes. The white blood cell will try to squeeze and get out through the holes. And that process is called diapedesis. Diapedesis. Okay. So, first margination, then diapedesis. So, the white blood cells will eventually get out from the blood vessel. And then what the white blood cell will do, will start to move towards the site of infection, will start to move. And how they move? You know, different creatures move different ways, right? So, the white blood cells move like an amoeba. Have you heard amoeba? Yeah, single cell uh, uh, creature. They move by producing steps, processes. So, white blood cells will move like an amoeba. That's why that movement is called amoeboid motion. Now, the question is, why the white blood cell will move towards the site of infection, not in another direction? Because when you get an infection, some chemical changes occur here, right? At the site of inflammation. So, that chemical change will attract the white blood cells towards them. So, towards the site of infection. That's why it is called positive chemotaxis. Chemical mm -hmm. attraction. Chemotaxis means chemical attraction. So, positive chemotaxis will attract the white blood cells will guide the white blood cells 
but direct the white blood cells towards the site of inflammation. What is negative chemotaxis then? We'll tell, don't come here. We'll repel, we'll push out. Make sense? So, now why the white blood cell is going there? Because white blood cell can do phagocytosis, right? Engulf the microorganism. So, white blood cells will do phagocytosis and destroy the microorganisms. So, those are the properties, physiological or functional properties of the white blood cells. Yes? So, what is margination again? They get attached to the wall of the blood vessel. They line up. Okay, now, uh, different types of white blood cells. There are five different types of white blood cells. We group them into two, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes have granules in their cytoplasm. So inside the granulocytes, you will find granules. That's why they are granulocytes. Sites are cells and granules have granules. Agranulocytes don't have granules, absence of granules. Now, granulocytes are neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Those three belong to granulocytes. That means they have what? Granules. Granules are tiny particles, right? Highly concentrated chemical particles. Agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. One simple way to remember is granulocytes end with what? The name ends with fills. Agranulocytes end with what? Sites. Why granulocytes end with fills? Because the granules attract the dye. Attract the dye. Philia. Philia means what? Liking, right? Attracting. So the granules attract the dyes. Neutrophils. First, we will see how a neutrophil looks like. If you see a neutrophil, the nucleus is usually multi-lobed. This is a single nucleus, but it's lobulated. It has multiple lobes. Usually, we see two to six lobes in the nucleus, like a chain. And the granules in the cytoplasm, they take both acidic and alkaline or basic stains or dye. So, granules take what? Both acidic and basic dyes. So, what will be the color? They will cancel each other, right? Acid and base. Since the granules are taking both, the color of the granules will be pale. Pale color. Not bright. Because they will cancel. Acid and base will cancel each other. Neutral will become neutral. That's why neutro fit. Now, if you see an eosinophil, the nucleus is usually bilobed, two lobes. And the granules take orange or red color. So, you can easily see the color which is different than neutrophil. 
because eosinophils take the eosin, the color or dye, which is red. Okay. So if you see bilobes, bilobed nucleus and red colored granules, that is eosinophil. Acidic color. Acidic color is red. Now, basophil is also bilobed. So, this is a problem to identify. Basophil is also bilobed. But if you see the granules, the granules take passive stain and become purple color. I don't have purple. Okay. So, just think that these granules are purple color or bluish. Bluish or purple color granules. So, this is basophil. Okay. So, those are the granulocytes. Now, we will see the agranulocytes. Agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. Lymphocytes are easy to identify because lymphocytes have large round nucleus. So this is the nucleus. Large round nucleus occupies almost all inside part of the cell. Whole inside the cell is almost occupied by the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. A very thin rim of cytoplasm remains around the nucleus. Thin belt of cytoplasm. No granules, right? Because these are agranulocytes. Monocyte is very large compared to other cells, monocytes are much larger, bigger. <coughs> and the nucleus is kidney shaped or horseshoe shaped or bean shaped nucleus. So, nucleus is kidney or bean shaped. Sometimes we say horseshoe <laughs> shaped. Have you seen horseshoe? Okay, so uh, that's the monocyte. Now, uh, most common type of white blood cell is neutrophil. Neutrophil is the most common type. About 50 to 70 percent of the red blood cells are neutrophils. That means if you count 100 white blood cells, 50 to 70 white blood cells will be neutrophils. Make sense? Second highest is the lymphocytes. 25 to 45 percent white blood cells are lymphocytes. Other three types of cells are very small in number. Basophils are the smallest in number, very rare. Okay, so those are the five different types of white blood cells and how they look like um, under the microscope. Now, uh, most of the white blood cells are strongly, they have phagocytic, strong phagocytic property. They engulf the microorganisms. Uh, eosinophils, one clinical condition that is called eosinophilia. Eosinophilia, in which the count of eosinophil increases a lot. The number of eosinophil in your blood increases a lot. That is called eosinophilia. Eosinophil count increases in any type of allergic reactions. In any type of 
allergic reaction eosinophil count goes up in the blood basophils are important because two important chemicals are produced by basophils which two important chemicals are produced by basophils one is called heparin have you heard this heparin anticoagulant right prevents blood clot so heparin is an anticoagulant which is produced by basophil another chemical is histamine histamine is also produced by the basophils and histamine causes inflammation inflammatory chemical inflammation is caused by histamine so anticoagulant heparin and inflammatory chemical and that causes inflammation is histamine those are produced uh, by basophil okay lymphocytes lymphocytes are very powerful in destroying the antigens lymphocytes are the main warriors in your immune system there are two types of lymphocytes one is for t cells or t lymphocytes another is b cells or b lymphocytes t cells do phagocytosis phagocytosis and b cells produce antibodies Okay, antibodies and by doing phagocytosis and producing antibodies your lymphocytes fight against the microorganisms okay they are very powerful uh, in fighting against microorganisms okay monocytes are largest in size and some monocytes get out from the blood and enter into the tissue okay and become giant cells called macrophages so macrophages are the cells uh, come from monocytes so sometimes monocytes uh, come out from the blood vessel from the blood and enter into the tissue and become tissue macrophages okay so those are the white blood cells so just remember those i have mentioned important things you see yes Uh, Isonophilia? Yeah. Uh, what can happen if it goes wrong? Yeah. Uh, Isonophilia is uh, actually not that harmful. Okay. It can happen uh, if your body gets an infection or allergic condition, isonophil count will go up. Okay. What you will feel, uh, you. Uh, Eosinophilia, when eosinophilia occurs, you will see uh, the, uh, you will feel itchiness, okay, in the skin and also the redness of the skin. So, itchiness and redness of the skin uh, occurs in eosinophilia. Uh, but usually, uh, it goes away, it's like usually temporary. Isonophilia, just isonophilia count goes up and then we go back to normal.
Okay. You know, in many allergic reactions, you feel itchiness, right? In the skin, that's because of the increased number of eosinophil. So just know those information I gave you. You see here, uh, a lymphocyte and a monocyte. Monocyte is very big, kidney-shaped nucleus. Lymphocyte has a large, round nucleus. About platelet, just read this bottom part, circle it and read it. Uh, platelets are not uh, really considered as cells yeah, in many books or many uh, you know clinical uh, people. They don't think platelets are real cells because platelets come from a giant cell that is called megakaryocyte, like this big giant cell, megakaryocyte, megakaryocyte, mega means big, you know that, and what happens, uh, a small part of cell membrane of megakaryocyte get, gets detached from the main body with some cytoplasm and nanos inside it. That's all. So if it gets detached, this is the platelet. Okay. So platelets come from a tiny piece of cell membrane and some cytoplasm and granules of megakaryocytes. Okay. So that's why uh, many people think that they are not real cells, but when we say different types of blood cells, we include platelets. Uh, platelets uh, help in blood clot formation. Platelet help in blood clot formation. Uh, the count is 150,000 to 400,000. That's the normal Rains are count in one microliter of blood. Okay. Another name of platelet is thrombocyte. So thrombocyte is another name of platelet. Okay. Leukocyte is another name of what? White blood cell, right? Leukocyte. Leuco means white. Erythrocyte, another name of red blood cells. And thrombocyte is another name of platelets. Okay. <clears throat> if the count of thrombocyte or platelet goes very low, becomes very low, that condition is called thrombocytopenia. Penia means decreased number. Thrombocytopenia. Make sense? So that means thrombocytes are less. Penia. Leukopenia is what? Leuco. Decreased what? White blood cells, right? Leukocytes are white blood cells. Erythrocytes are red blood cells, right? I said leukopenia. That means leukocytes are low, lower number of white blood cells. Okay, the lifespan of platelets is very short. Okay, uh, usually four to five days after they enter into circulation, and total lifespan from the birth is five to ten days. But once it enters into the circulation, blood circulation, it's four to five days. So very short lifespan. And uh, that makes sense because you see, the thrombocyte or platelet doesn't have anything basically. 
no nucleus, no organelles, right? Cytoplasm and some granules are there. <coughs> Leukopoiesis. Poiesis means production and leuco is white blood cell, leukocytes. So leukopoiesis is the production of white blood cells. The number of factors can stimulate the leukopoiesis or production of white blood cells. One type of chemicals called interleukins, IL. Interleukins, there are different types, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So interleukins stimulate the bone marrow to produce white blood cells. Another is called colony stimulating factor, CSF. That also stimulates the production of white blood cells or leukopoiesis, okay? We know that all blood cells come from the stem cell called the hemocytoblast. Hemocytoblast is the stem cell from the hemocytoblast all types of blood cells arise or come. First, you see the top most cell, that's the hemocytoblast. And hemocytoblast multiplies and form two different types of stem cells. One type is called the myeloid stem cell and another type is called lymphoid stem cell. Those are also stem cells. Then myeloid stem cells finally produces, myeloid stem cell produces four different types of blood cells. You see now in the bottom. This is the myeloid stem cell and from myeloid stem cell, any of these four types of blood cells can be produced. Eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, and monocytes. Lymphoid stem cells only produces lymphocytes. Okay. But also know that hemocytoblast produces red blood cells. Hemocytoblasts produce red blood cells. And uh, they did not show it here. Hemocytoblast produces pro erythroblast. You can write it down. So hemocytoblast basically produces all types of blood cells. Hemo to last. Okay, so this is the stem cell, the earliest stem cell. Then hemocytoblast produces pro erythroblast that will form erythrocyte finally. That means red blood cell, right? Erythrocyte or red blood cell. Hemocytoblast also produces megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte produces what? Platelets. Just a few minutes ago I did draw, right? Big cell, the cell membrane will get uh, attached. So, megakaryocyte produces thrombocytes or platelets. from both sides or platelet okay? and then hemocytoblast also produces myeloid and lymphoid. So myeloid stem cells and lymphoid 
stamps up. Okay. Myeloid produces four different types of white blood cells: neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, and monocyte. Lymphatic stem cell produces the lymphocytes. So now you got all types of blood cells, right? Red blood cells, five different types of white blood cells, and platelets or thrombocytes. So everything come from hemocytoblast. Okay, everything come from hemocytoblast. Leukocyte disorders. Leukocytosis. If the count of white blood cell goes above 11,000, you know that normal count is 4 to 11,000, right? So if the count of red blood cell is over 11,000, then that is called leukocytosis. Leukocytosis occurs very often very often it occurs. Any kind of general infection, if you get any, for example, pharyngitis or laryngitis, right, tonsillitis, any kind of infection will increase the count of white blood cell in your blood. And that is called leukocytosis. And actually that's a good way to know that you have infection in your body. And that's why uh, the doctors will ask you to do the count. Of white blood cell. If they see the count is slightly higher, that means you have any kind of infection in your body. Okay, so leukocytosis is a good indication that your body might have infection, although you won't see from outside. Leukopenia. Penia means what? Penia. Low, lower count. Just I mentioned few minutes ago. Leukopenia is decreased count of a low count of white blood cell. Leukemia is a serious clinical condition. Usually, we uh, call uh, call it as blood cancer. Leukemia. Uh, now, leukemia could be two different types: lymphocytic leukemia and myelocytic. Leukemia. You see here, if this cell, myeloid stem cell, starts to produce abnormally high number of white blood cells, uncontrolled multiplication, that is called what? Myelocytic leukemia. Leukemia. Make sense? So, in myelocytic leukemia, you will see increased number of neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte because this one is producing those cells. Make sense? Leukocytic leukemia occurs due to abnormal multiplication of lymphoid stem cells. So, in that case, we will see very, very high number of leukocytes, uh, uh, lymphocytes. That's why it is lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, just to know that. Leukemia uh, causes uh, a number of problems. <clears throat> number one, uh, since the production of white blood cell is extremely high, right? Extremely high number of white blood cells are entering into the blood, into circulation. And that will cause circulatory overload the volume and the thickness of blood will increase so that will cause increased pressure on the capillaries make sense if your blood volume increases that will cause circulatory overload uh, pressure will be increased on the capillaries particularly you know that capillary wall is extremely thin like a single layer of cells, right? So, many capillaries will be ruptured, broken. And you will see um, bleeding in the internal 
organs of the body as well as in the surface of the body. Bleeding due to rupture of the capillaries, blood vessels. That is a uh, problem. Continuous rupture or hemorrhage will occur. Another is, you know that although extremely high number of white blood cells are being produced, but those white blood cells are not able to fight against the microorganisms. Make sense? Because those are abnormal cells. They cannot fight. So you have very high, extremely high number of white blood cells, but those white blood cells are what? Useless. They are not fighting. So what? Your body will get infections easily. Make sense? And that's why we see multiple infections occur, uh, overwhelming infections occur in leukemia. So those are the clinical conditions related to leukemia. Platelets are small fragments of megakaryocytes. Formation is regulated by thrombopoietin is the chemical that thrombo, you see the name, thrombocyte is platelet, right? And poitin is the chemical that will cause poiesis production. It's like erythropoietin. Erythropoietin will produce more red blood cells, right? Thrombopoietin will produce more thrombocytes. Another thing, just know that uh, I told you a few minutes ago that platelets are formed by small cell membrane and some cytoplasm and granules inside. What are the granules you will find in the platelets? Serotonin, calcium granules, some enzymes, ADP and platelet derived growth factors, PDGF. So those are the granules present inside the platelets. We know that platelets uh, form the plug to uh, uh, help the clot formation. Here you see uh, just no two cells here. You see all blood cells come from this, right? Hemocytoplasm. And after going through few steps, finally, megakaryocyte is produced. And from the megakaryocyte, the thrombocytes are formed. So just, uh, here, cytoplasm is produced in all types of blood cells, and the megakaryocyte will be produced from the wall, and the platelets will be formed. I have shown you that already. So let's uh, stop here. We will finish the rest part in next class.